I am Anand Sharma, Executive Director at Techless Media Group, and I welcome you to this fireside chat on reinventing employee experience, business continuity in hybrid workspace. So, what is this all about? Remote and hybrid work is presenting a new set of challenges for organizations. In this scenario, traditional IT management can be expensive, especially when you are using different devices. from different vendors hence it teams need to pivot quickly towards adopting a digital solution that offers resilience agility and scalability at its core however many organizations are still struggling to offer a seamless vpn less experience to their employees coupled with endpoint security and device and app management in a single platform Please join me in welcoming Mr. Vineet Pushottaman, Group CIO of Aster DM Healthcare, to deliberate on strategy for today's distributed workforce with capabilities to connect and secure remote teams, improve employee productivity, and reduce support ticket volume. A very warm welcome to you, Vineet. My first question is, Vineet, with the new normal having hybrid work environment. in almost every sector except for frontline health workers how do you see cloud as a business enabler as compared to traditional it models yeah so i i see cloud as the uh, it's no more the enabler so it's the only only choice uh, if you really enable hybrid workforce uh, so i don't think there is any two views about it uh, there is obvious reasons why we talk about it because all all of us who were early cloud adopters whether it is in terms of deployment of solutions uh, whether it is a software as a service or even systems deployed on uh, cloud environments whether it is public or private uh, as long as it was and uh, as long it was a deployment on cloud which simply gives you an ability to access any time anywhere uh, that that is what uh, that is what really helped there that's that's what i'm sure helped many of us in our in our initial reaction to the pandemic i call it reaction because all of us just reacted uh, i don't think anybody had this had the time at that time to uh, think and strategize that is i'm talking about the first wave when all of us were suddenly hit so yes pandemic uh, really jolted many of you many of us and most of us reacted and i'm sure all of us who had who were early cloud adopters had a comparatively uh, easier or as i won't say easier but a seamless uh, movement uh, into a hybrid or a work from home kind of environment so the hybrid the hybrid situation uh, subsequently came up isn't it so started off we started off with work from home or work from anywhere so we had all kinds of terms we started off with work from home then work from anywhere then uh, reached into uh, that anywhere also having the office which we instead of it's a, we call it the hybrid work and all of this in all these scenarios if your solutions deployed on the cloud if you are if your basic office automations are in place uh, again cloud enabled it definitely definitely is a much better situation uh than than if you are absolutely and i really like your uh, uh analysis that everybody did react to to the pandemic so how has been the change from enterprise security layer to home network security in this newly evolved hybrid work scenario again uh so it's very uh it's interesting for people uh, for cios and ceos and uh technology leaders across the world because uh not long ago most of us were very happy uh and and uh, and sure and and like you say uh sleeping well in the night where you're sure that you have you have been able to secure your perimeter now <laughs> the interesting aspect was that perimeter for all of us perhaps was our or of office buildings uh and then then you would uh, think about giving those 
few people who want to access systems from home, uh, uh, a virtual private network, and then some of those people because they were accessing some quality, some some confidential data, you may put a two factor. Suddenly things changed because the, there was there was no perimeter anymore, uh, right? So your endpoint device uh, is the perimeter. So and no more it's it's that it's that endpoint device and that to imagine the endpoint device is not may not be even yours. So you have to rethink the whole the whole paradigm of how do you bring in how do you secure your systems and your 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 environment that is whether it is. Uh, you can call it company data, like we call it patient data, customer data. You can call whatever kind of information you are talking about. Uh, you had you had to now ensure all the endpoints are secure. You have to ensure that you are, you were, you exactly knew what's happening in each of the endpoints, and uh, that too, not by interfering into the people's. Work. So the easiest thing is to not the cross, not to cross the route. <laughs> You'll never be hit by it. Yeah, but that's that's not a choice. Uh, so and also also you can shut down all the windows and doors and sit inside a room. You'll be again safe. So the Absolutely. so therefore therefore you had to create an environment where business was not getting hindered because you were tying down the hands and legs of our employees, uh, but letting them free to work at the same time safeguard. So that's been the right balance. Uh, there are various technologies and solutions. Uh, people like us took a very phased approach, uh, very very much ensuring that endpoints are safe while ensuring uh, the overall uh, cloud infrastructure is uh, protected. And at the same time, I would like to re-emphasize re that there is nothing called as 100% protection, right? So therefore, you always have to put those layers of protection. At the same time, uh, in very simple words, keep your eyes, ears, and all sensors open to anything that's happening around so that you react and, and do it. <clears throat> absolutely, absolutely. So uh, moving on, you know, uh, how has the pandemic changed the business continuity paradigm, especially in case of traditional or legacy organizations in comparison to born in cloud organization? So uh, I guess, uh, if you if you call traditional organizations may not be the right word because yeah because even if you are traditional organizations if you if you invested earlier and uh, moved on uh, to deploy solutions on the cloud uh, you are definitely better off uh, but if you are traditional organizations who have legacy systems which you are not cloud ready and therefore you have to take a, a path midway yes you would have had some challenges of ensuring business continuity sure. But but there are there are ways in uh, and means to achieve that uh, because you would then put uh, intermediate layers. You you will have to decide how do you bring in uh, some kind of uh, deployment in the cloud in uh, as an intermediary layer uh, to get that that amount of uh, what do you call enablement onto this middle layer uh, to make the to make the access uh, across. So. There are various ways in which you can do it, uh, or else, like in our case, uh, wherever we had hospital information systems mm -hmm. uh, that compromised, okay. and uh, we had to enable access for our doctors uh, from their home. Uh, mm -hmm. We invested uh, on 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 uh, secure VPNs with two factor, mm -hmm. and and control that access. Uh, created created modules within uh, the legacy system which enable. Uh, these access only to doctors. So there, you had to you had to think on your foot and keep making changes quickly. In our case, uh, we had uh, it, it is it was over time. <laughs> it was it was more work. It was it a hospital the full. Uh, it was the completely the other way around. Uh, and uh, and we had to ensure our doctors were safe. We had to ensure our uh, our employees, our key uh, employees like nurses and doctors were safe. Oh. Uh, our patients were taken care of. Right at the same time, our back office teams were working from anywhere and able to support our frontline staff. So yeah. it was a very experience uh, uh, to make systems available. I remember the team used to work, uh, had to work continuously uh, across forty-eight hours uh, to switch on almost three thousand uh, around that approximately numbers of 
uh, VPN two factor authentication add is to just make so that we immediately had everybody the required access to uh, wow next to the system. So these are all these are all these are all uh, there are there are the front line warriors and there are uh, the warriors that played their role uh, in the back end. Uh, so some of these guys had to really uh, really work hard uh, without uh, across sleepless nights to get this thing done because. Must be, must be absolutely yeah so how the how the needs have changed uh, for modern workforce from business resilience perspective uh, yes yeah, so now it is like again uh, initial i said initial was a reaction the second time onwards we were more prepared uh, you were you were almost on the cusp of being more little more strategic and little more prepared as to how you react to this mm-hmm. and then Uh, then what you we all now call the new normal uh, we we understood that this is here to stay mm. and many of us i'm sure have have made plans there are various models that have come into place where uh, even in our case with our with our presence across uh, seven countries we had to we had to we had to decide how do we in each each geography each country had its own challenges uh, so we had to we had to be uh, very clear as to how do we address each of these requirements specific to the area so in some places we said okay let's let's switch out. we don't need so many officers we could have work from home some place we said no uh, over a period we said no work from home uh, is only for a period you have to have offices where people come you may have hot seats so these are all changes that's been happening right and all the time uh, as 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 cios and technology folks you have to ensure you are supporting business uh, in which either of these models which i said you started off we all started off with work from home to work from to work from anywhere to calling it the hybrid work yeah. uh, so yes it has been the a couple of things that's now become uh, a, a a hygiene a matter of hygiene is that uh, like i said the uh, the end point is is it has to be secure the end point is the perimeter uh, or in fact there is no perimeter whichever you want to look at it uh, the other aspect is that solutions uh, that are accessible anytime anywhere mm. uh, mm. the security which automatically means that it has to be uh, a, de- a cloud deployed solution with the required layer of security uh, comes into picture yeah, yeah. The ability to <clears throat> the ability to have uh, ability to ha- ac- have access to the patient data in our case or customer data in any other business across verticals mm. across different business silos has become uh, has become a profound uh, requirement become this everybody knew that but then uh, suddenly people realized that during this period oh. right yeah. uh, focus, focus on obviously uh, security has people have understood how important information security is uh, how 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 we should be uh, the whole awareness around uh, whole whole matter whole whole uh, what about the uh, the importance of driving awareness uh to ensure information security uh, because it, it, everybody is now understood that it's not just about putting tools it's also about awareness because uh, all the more because you're sitting at home uh, uh you, you, if, if if you don't if you don't enable or if you don't educate our employees as to what is what are those safe habits hmm. uh, it is not just like sitting in an office and you're managing them and it's in a it's in a secure environment where the doors are access uh, access by only authorized personnel you sitting yeah. in a home there could be people around you you could be talking aloud you could be having information on your screen that is very very confidential how do you how do you save that all that is awareness none of that is uh, is is what a tool can do so all of that has become very very important so uh, the the need for awareness building awareness and consist- continuously insisting on them endpoint security uh, single single version of the truth and having having uh, the uh, the customer data or the organization data or the patient data in one place for people to access oh. across uh, deployment on cloud all of those have been uh, big changes or paradigm changes that's happened over the last couple of years yeah absolutely absolutely so when it what's a new approach for business continuity in terms of people process and technology adding the hybrid site environment uh, along with it if you have a solution that is able to uh, able to run on the cloud and may have access across that is half job done mm. but if not then you are, you are you have to make those switches make those changes like i said 
talk building something in between in middle uh, sure. to get that done that's one aspect otherwise otherwise the biggest uh, for me the biggest change has been to uh, to see how you have uh, solutions that are uh, that does that does in my case uh, in the case of healthcare uh, we have we have looked at how do we create uh, solutions have a uh, have an option to work offline and online so so okay. what, what it means is that you could have a deployment on the cloud uh, it may sound yes that's what we need to do a business continuity planning but okay. you also need to know, uh, what happens if that access with that with that cloud solution itself is not available not reachable for whatever reason uh, therefore you need to have an offline and online you should have uh, in our case our hospital should be able to run uh, even if there's a disruption uh, of the last mile uh, so therefore we all the more the solutions will continue to look at uh, how do you do offline online that's one second is how do you uh, how do you have access across geographies and how do you ensure uh, because again we present across seven geog- seven countries or yeah. and data cannot cross the geographical boundaries yeah. so yeah, are there things that i need to make accessible across geographies how do i ensure that the patient data doesn't travel so some of these restrictions Uh, these are all the things that 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 actually go on uh, to ensure business continuity absolutely sure so coming to productivity tools in your opinion you know uh, uh, productivity tools uh, to unlock employees potential are a boon or bane and what about data privacy vulnerabilities at all yeah you see, you see me smiling on that question because uh, i have had couple of uh, conversations on this with a few of my mm. colleagues here. it was interesting that when again when the pandemic hit and we reacted all that we wanted uh, to do was uh, was was to have our people work for us uh, mm. where and uh, initial days uh, our trust levels with our employees were extremely high yeah uh, because and and i'm sure all of us worked beyond beyond the hours and nobody at that time thought that oh is is somebody working from home uh is he working uh, is he actually working but as as the as the times went by uh, i know these discussions around productivity tools whether working from home is more productive uh, yeah. all of those things are happening right which to me uh, is uh, is that cultural shift that is required to say okay. that whether you trust your employees or not i believe it is important that you trust your employees uh, okay to do your job. uh productivity is is not just a function of how much time you spend in front of the in front of the computer and how many keys do you press and yeah. you actually on doing this it's a uh, therefore that's what a tool can do that's what a productivity or, or a, a tool that measures productivity can do yes it is important uh, in certain uh, certain industries and certain uh, services where you are yeah. actually catering to people across the world with their as fixed sls but that's true even when you're doing in the office right so so for me uh to really look at a tool now because we people working from home is perhaps not the right uh, right approach so sure. for me for me it's important that that cultural shift to understand that a hybrid workforce means that i'm expecting and trusting my employees to deliver uh irrespective of where they are working from is also important right so i should i should have that Uh, so a CIO and a CHRO, you know, there is a technology and the HR function should work together to yeah. drive that. And uh, I am not a fan of uh, having uh, tools measure uh, productivity. Not a bad idea to do it, but don't just rely on it. So, according to you, what are the workspace intelligence uh, capabilities for digital employee experience, uh, rather enhanced experience in a hybrid workspace? Uh, you will want to so first first of all if you have a good office automation tools uh, whether uh, i don't want to name uh, the tool but things tools that allow you to seamlessly move between a conference call to a chat to a call and and stay on the same at the same time exchange data uh, is is very very clear whether you do it on a zoom or whether you do it do it on a teams or do it on a google meet it is a different discussion but then uh that's very important that you are able to uh switch and 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 exchange information while you are while you are doing us doing your work 
uh, whether it's a video, audio, or any other conversation that you have. So that's important. From the from the customer and end end user perspective, hmm. uh, the whole lot that's now available. Uh, therefore, uh, if you haven't uh, if you haven't worked on ensuring there are uh, chatbots and uh, tools enabled, now is the time to do it. Uh, it's also the time where you now have solutions that that have got uh, very loosely called, but then yes, very important that artificial intelligence and uh, NLP built into solutions. But then in simple terms, uh, uh, so, so that we don't hype it too much, it's simple terms that it is the, uh, if the person asks this, then this should be the response, else, else this, it's all, it's all about putting very simple logic uh, yeah. to ensure, ensure that you you uh, take that person through a very seamless uh, set of questions uh, so that we help him yeah. fast and yes. as far as possible mm -hmm. uh, uh, and keep the, uh, human intervention uh, as something that you that you come that you bring in only when required so bring in chat interface bots uh, use of rpas artificial intelligence all of those put together uh, right uh, is is required and is something that uh, we should all look forward to sure sure thank you so much vinit i think talking about security to business resilience to business continuity and to ways of working normal, to looking at holistic employee experience, to reducing silos. We had a lot of takeaways uh, from this fireside chat. It was really a privilege hosting you today at CXO Tech Summit. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.